From Kern Government Television, welcome to this week's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting, originating from the County Administrative Center, located at 1115 Truxton Avenue, Bakersfield, California. Kern County's vision is to create and maintain a customer-centered county government designed to garner the confidence, support, and trust of the people we serve. Today's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting will convene momentarily. Good evening and welcome to this year's State of the County Dinner. Kern County feeds our nation. Kern County powers our nation. And Kern County keeps our nation safe. We all know there is a lot going on right now in Washington. Navigating these times in our nation's capital, I rely more than ever on lessons I learned growing up in Kern, going to school in Kern, owning a business in Kern, and still living in Kern. When I describe our home to my colleagues in Congress, I tell them of a place blessed with natural resources and a people who embrace rugged individualism, a people whose kind-hearted and hard-working spirit have made our home the place it is. Through our combined efforts, the people of this county make the impossible possible every day. There's few places like Kern County and we should be proud of all we do to keep Kern among the most important communities in America. I look forward to working with each of you in the new year to build a Kern's many successes for a more prosperous future. God bless. Welcome back. We want to thank our Congressman McCarthy and his staff for being a part of our evening tonight. So for those few out there, if you'll please find your seats, we'll get started. Allow me to introduce a few people as we begin. Uh, we'll have our color guard tonight presented by the Kern County Sheriff's uh, Honor Guard. Singing the national anthem will be Miss Destiny Aguirre, the lovely and talented daughter of Mayor Joe Aguirre. And now I have the incredible honor of bringing an amazing man who's extremely humble to the stage to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. He served in the United States Army for seven years with a deployment to Bosnia. He served in the, the California Army National Guard where he was deployed to Iraq in 2003. Before he retired from the military, in 2005 he was awarded a Bronze Star and a Purple Heart. It is my deepest honor to please welcome our very own Director of Veteran Services, Mr. Joshua Danins. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll please rise for the posting of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll please salute and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please welcome Destiny Aguirre for the national anthem. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we hailed at the 
twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we've watched her so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled Please be seated. Thank you. As we begin tonight, I would like to recognize a few people. So if you will please stand when we call your name. Uh, just a quick note, this is the calisthenics part of the evening, so be prepared. Tonight we have representation from Congressman McCarthy's office, Aaron Falk. California Assemblyman Vince Fong's office, Lauren Skidmore. <laughs> California State Senator Sh Shannon Grove's office, Liz Mojica. <laughs> California State Senator Kamala Harris office, Matt Rogers. <laughs> Our County Supervisors, First District Supervisor, Mick Gleason. Our second district supervisor, Zach Scrivener. Third district supervisor, Mike Maggard. Representatives from fifth district supervisor, Leticia Perez's office. Our chief administrative officer, Ryan Alsop. Kern County Assessor and Recorder, John Lifquist, <laughs> Kern County District Attorney, Cynthia Zimmer. <laughs> Kern County Treasurer Tax Collector, Jordan Kaufman. <laughs> okay, now for a few of them en masse. Our Kern County department heads in attendance tonight, please stand. Including the newly appointed interim fire chief, David Witt. Thank you all. Would all of our city mayors and city managers please stand. Thank you. Would all of our members of city councils, special districts, school boards, and their representatives please stand? Thank you. We also want to recognize the Kern County Board of Trade Directors, Jim Baldwin, Kathy Oren, Stacy Havner, David Brust, Karen Northcutt, and Linda Parker. We'd also like to recognize from Congressman T.J. Cox's office, Gilbert Felix. We'd
We also have representation from Edwards Air Force Base this evening, Colonel Sean Bradley from the 412th Electronic Weapons Group. And Major Brian Anderson from the 812th Civil Engineering Group. I'm just gonna say, if we keep going at this rate, I'm gonna need Dr. Zelezny up here and we're gonna have to do this graduation style. There are a few special thanks that we'd like to extend. First, please join me in thanking the men and women of the Kern County Sheriff's Office team who are here tonight making sure that we're all safe. You can't see them, but they are here. Next, we wanna thank each of you. This is so important. Each of you is a committed member of our community and of all the places that you could be on a Wednesday night, you chose to be here with us. So thank you so much. On behalf of the county, I wanna thank all of the sponsors. I know Richard will do a little bit more of this when he's up here, but I wanted to make sure you heard directly from us as well. We are incredibly fortunate to have such great partners with the organizations that do business here in Kern County. Thank you all for supporting our community, not just tonight, but every day. Thank you to our sponsors. Finally, I want to thank from the very bottom of my heart the team at KEDC who has worked on this event for the last several months. Vice President Cheryl Scott, I'm not quite sure where you are. Thank you so much for your leadership and partnership. We've thrown some major challenges your way and you've handled them so gracefully, thank you. Michelle Taylor, she, there she is, she's hiding in the back. Uh, she's running around here tonight and this is her hard work on display. She's paid attention to every detail and was bound and determined to prove that the fairgrounds could be transformed into a beautiful venue worthy of all of your company. Michelle, you've outdone yourself. Now I'm honored to introduce President and CEO of the Kern Economic Development Corp, for nearly 10 years, he's led KEDC and shaped the economic future of Kern County. His list of accomplishments and contributions is long, and we're so proud to par partner with him. He's also incredibly compassionate, and he has an awesome sense of humor. Please join me in welcoming Richard Chapman. Thank you, Megan, and uh, it's been a pleasure and honor and privilege to work with uh, Megan and Ryan and the CAO's office as well as Supervisor Couch's uh, staff and, and, the, and the supervisor himself uh, preparing uh, this event. And it's really a testament to the incredible economic vitality and potential we have in Kern County. And I, I'm reining in my humor tonight, but you'll see me at many other events uh, because I wanted to save it for Supervisor Couch as, through his presentation. Um, I know we're all waiting uh, with bated breath, and um, but uh, we are really excited that this event um, uh, would not be possible without many of the sponsors tonight. And uh, want to introduce you um, in terms of our uh, two two sponsors: the um, platinum sponsor first uh, with Dignity Health, and really um, pleased to have Ken Keller here tonight behind the stage. Uh, he is a newly minted president and CEO of Bakersfield Memorial Hospital. So I'd like, uh, without further ado, Ken Keller. So good evening, Kern County. Um, congratulations and welcome to the event that you guys put on. This really isn't about the county itself, but this is about opportunity, it's about partnership, and it's about a community. Um, on behalf of the roughly 4,000 employees, teammates that we have across the Dignity Health facilities and our business interests here in Kern County, we are extremely pleased and privileged to be able to sponsor the event tonight. I mentioned community and I mentioned opportunity and I, number there, I know that there were a number of us out there this morning using one such opportunity to continue to build our community through the point in time count. The results of that 
and the connectivity that we had across a broad base of constituents, private, public, uh, governmental, not-for-profit, for-profit, um, all of these organizations coming together to figure out how we can continue to grow, improve, and optimize Kern County itself. So we, stand with you, we're ready to help, and we're looking forward to the opportunity, and the opportunity to continue to partner with each of you. Have a great evening tonight. We're looking forward to it. Thanks, Ken. And healthcare, uh, you know, the, the infrastructure is so critical, this quality of life factor for economic development. And I've been uh, hugely impressed over the last decade that I've been here in terms of, of this enhanced infrastructure that is really a great recruitment and retention uh, tool. Next, I want to have Richard Cohen, not Richard Chapman, but Richard Cohen. I uh, was really excited uh, as Rio Tinto Borats is our, uh, is our um, returning presenting sponsor. And if you haven't been out to Rio Tinto and uh, to the world's largest uh, borax mine, it's phenomenal. And uh, I, I, I know that Mary Beth's going to plan tours for everybody in this room, although we'll have to stagger it out over a couple of days. But uh, Richard is the managing director of Rio Tinto Borates. And uh, he's going to show you uh, the story of economic development and innovation. And uh, stay tuned uh, for his uh, presentation. Thanks, everyone. It's absolutely our privilege to be the presenting sponsor for this event. We've done it for a number of years, and we're very excited to do it again this year. And this year, it's my privilege to, to tell you a little bit about our business, what we do at Boron, but also what we do globally as a global company headquartered here in Kern County. I'm going to start with a little quiz, and I'd like a show of hands, please. How many people in this room have used a product made of borates in the last seven days? So my, my guess is I've got 25% of people that have put their hand up. I actually think what you'll find is it's significantly higher. So let me show you a few products and then we'll do the quiz again. Firstly, who's got ceramic cookware that they put on their, their hot plate or their oven and doesn't get hot? All of those have borax in them. Who's got the famous 20 mule team borax detergent that they use for their washing powder? A few of those still even perfect. Who's got fertilizer that they put on their lawn or their garden? Probably just about everyone. Who grows plants and uses and eats um, product from the United States? Who's got fiberglass insulation in their house or timber-treated wood panelling? All of that contains borates. And if I haven't got you yet, who's got a mobile phone? <laughs> because the reality is, if it wasn't for borates, you couldn't touch the glass of your mobile phone because it would be too hot. It's in every mobile phone, it's in every LED TV. And just to finish off, if I haven't got anyone, who's got ant killer? in their pantry at home. <laughs> so now let's see a show of hands. Who's used a product with borates in the last seven days? Important to understand that we're very proud to produce an element that is used in so many parts of our everyday life. Before I talk about the borates business, I'd like to talk about Rio Tinto very briefly. Rio Tinto is one of the largest mining companies in the world. We have operations in every continent, as you can see from the picture on the graph, we're heavily concentrated in Australia and North America, but touch every continent and a lot of countries. We employ globally about 50,000 people. We have five product groups, one for iron ore, one for energy and minerals, which the borates business is a part of, one for copper and diamonds, and one for aluminium, and then a support group called growth and innovation that drive the way we do business. Here in the US, we're also an important player. Not only do we have the Boron operation, which I'll talk about more, but we have the Kennecott copper mine 
and we have a very exciting copper deposit in Arizona near Resolution that we're looking to develop over the next few years in partnership with BHP. It's also very important economically of the US for us, 30% of our global shareholding comes from the United States. So really important customer base, really important supplier base, and really important investment. But let me talk about the bore rates business now. The bore rates business has a very proud history, 146 years of operation. It started in Death Valley and the famous 20 mule team that hauled product 160 miles to Mojave. In fact, the wagons that were built to haul that were actually built in Mojave back in the early 1800s. That, that team and that legacy lives long in our business. It's very proud and you see it not only in our business but I'm pleased you see it through the communities in Kern County as well. It did spurn a TV show called Death Valley Days, one of the longest running Western TV shows in television history, played for 40 years between 1930 and 1970 and in fact had Ronald Reagan as the host in 1963 and 1964. 91 years ago we left Death Valley and we moved to our current location. We started as an underground mine and we did that for about 30 years before we became an open pit operation in 1957. And we've been mining from that same open pit ever since. Today we mine about 30 million, 30 million tonnes of material out of that mine every year. We create $3 million, $3 million tonnes of product that gets refined into one million tonnes of saleable bore rates product across the globe. We are truly a global business, but we are headquartered not only here in California, but we're headquartered in Kern County. We, we are one of the two largest providers of bore rates in the world. We provide 30% of the market. As you can see here, we touch a lot of customers, a lot of countries, we employ about 1,000 people, of which 800 are here in the state of California, and we are the largest open mining pit in California today. <laughs> this slide shows our six operations. I mentioned we were a global company. We have three operations here in California. The Boron Mine that will be familiar to most, we have a port facility at the Port of LA, in fact the only privately owned port facility in that port. We have a small operation at Owens Lake and then we have three operations in Europe that are both logistics and further processing. One in Spain, one in Holland and one in France. And they make up our global business. But our headquarters corporately are now at the Boron site and where all of my senior leadership team attend every day. You got a sense of the flavour of the markets we provide right from the outset, but there's really three key markets. The first is agriculture. We are part of solving the food problems in the world today. We are about getting more utilisation and a more efficiency from soils, and bore rates improve significantly, not only the quality of food that can be grown, but also the yield, and optimises that in countries that need it the most not only here in North America, but in South America, China and India. We feed the energy sector through insulation, through heat resistance timber, through solar and through energy production. And as I got everyone's attention, we clearly help urbanisation, feeding glass to ensure that it's safe to touch for mobile phones, tablets and TVs. Perhaps now I'll, I'll play a short video so you can hear from one of our employees about what it's like to work in the Boron business. Uh, my name's Brandon Griffiths. I'm senior geologist here at the Rio Tinto Borates Boron Operations. Been uh, here for 12 years and uh, manage the geology program. I mainly focus on uh, where the mineral's at and how to effectively get to it. On a daily basis, we mine about 10,000 tons of borates that we uh, mine and process. That's one of the main reasons I got into geology, because I like being outdoors and doing various types of field work. In the mining industry, it's very dynamic. The area that you're working in is changing on a daily basis, pretty much. So it's kind of you know exciting. You always got to 
love the, the large equipment that we're working with. <laughs> and I take pride in knowing that uh, I work in an industry that, that does have a daily effect on, on people's lives. The products that they use are improvements to our level of lifestyle. I think that video is really useful. Not only great to hear from our employees, but also great to see some of the footage of the operation, because it's often hard to put into words. So I've talked a lot about what we do and what our product is used for. For me, probably more importantly, is the way we go about our business. So I just want to talk about that for a few minutes. Firstly, for us, safety is absolutely critical. Safety isn't about statistics. It's not about a trend. It's not about a curve. It's about people, and we are absolutely committed to making sure everyone goes home from our workplaces exactly the same way they come to work every day, whether they're an employee, a visitor, or a contractor. We tackle three elements in safety. We focus absolutely on fatality prevention. It is simply not acceptable for anyone to lose their life working in the mining industry. We also focus on injury prevention, and the tools to prevent slips, trips, falls, and sprains are different to those to, that prevent a fatality. And then we focus on preventing what we call process safety incidents, those very rare catastrophic incidents that can lead to multiple fatalities or major damage. And we tackle all three differently, but in a combined view to ensure we provide the safest possible workplace that we have. I know for sure what makes our business great is not the asset we have in the ground. It's not the resource. It's not the mine, it's not the processing plant, it's the people that we have working for us. And that's where we invest after safety most of our time. We focus on trying to engage our workforce and make sure that all thousand people want to give a little bit extra to deliver outstanding results for the business. Twelve months ago, as a leadership team, we developed these eight behaviours, and it's these eight behaviours we now use to build our culture around. And we're progressively building on how we practice these, how we implement these, and how we use these behaviours to redefine the business we'll have for the next 40 years and beyond. My here role again. here is in the quality management team. We oversee the quality control checks uh, from the mining operation all the way through the ship product to ensure that customer specifications are met. This is our relatively new MDDK plan. It's the front end, the dissolving for most of the product that we ship out of here. The best thing about working here is really the people interactions. There's a lot of challenges with the variety and scope and scale of everything we have. Different customers have different specifications, different operations have different challenges. And putting that all together to, to make the customer happy, to make the operation work, it takes people. Everything we do incorporates our stakeholders to ensure that uh, environmentally, uh, as well as you know, within the community, we're, we're progressing this, this image of mining, we're progressing this image of providing minerals and elements to society. Hopefully you can hear the level of engagement and enthusiasm in Evan's voice. The, the way we see that engagement and that enthusiasm translate is we see our people doing some amazing things. And this slide just shows one of those improvements from the last part of last year. One of our products we produce is called Granule Bore 2. We took five people out of their role and gave them nothing else to focus on, but we asked them to raise the capacity of that production line by 10% over three months. What that team actually achieved is raising the capacity of the system in two months by 30% without spending any capital. They were able to use the great ideas that exist by the people that actually operate the equipment every day, turn those ideas very quickly into action, and pleasantly, I think, surprise themselves by the results. And that has created enormous momentum. Those same people now are talking about how they take the system even further. And that's the value of engagement. Outside our door relationships are also important. We have a number of stakeholders in our business and a number of you are here today in the room. We are very focused on contributing to the communities that which our employees live and they live all across this county as well as other counties. We're active in all of them, but we're certainly at the moment looking to do more. Last year we spent more than $115 million with local suppliers and we'll continue to focus on local procurement efforts 
to ensure the longevity of local businesses and supply relationships that we have. We're also making sure that we have great job opportunities for everyone. As I mentioned, we employ some 800 people in California, from truck drivers to operators to janitors to admin people to engineers to scientists with PhD degrees. There are fantastic opportunities in our business no matter what it is that people want to do. In terms of giving back into communities, we're active in many ways, but the area we're focusing on improving even further is in education. Something I'm absolutely passionate about is giving back to education at all levels, and we're exploring a number of opportunities to be more active in that space. We hosted a number of very exciting elementary school visits last year. We've gone back to schools to present, to try and engage those people that might work for us sometime in the future. Hopefully what you can see is we've got a very proud past, a very successful present, but probably what has us most interested is the opportunity to reshape this business going forward and deliver a very exciting future. Thanks very much for your time. All right, one more time, if we could give a big round of applause to Dignity Health and Rio Tinto for your support tonight. We truly appreciate your commitment to Kern County. I would describe Kern County as a diverse community. My word would be family. I would pick awesome. Oil, agriculture, and education. It's a very caring community. A place of opportunity. Fairly intellectual. The word would be quaint. Yo usaría dos palabras, retos y oportunidades. Nature-filled quality of life meets innovation incubation. Generous and friendly. And Kern County is unique because it's got beautiful vistas, it's got great economic potential, in the areas of oil, agriculture, renewable energy, solar, wind, and uh, in the aerospace and space access. Here in Kern County, uh, we have affordable housing, uh, we have great workforce development programs, we have great educational institutions, and we have a community that really rallies around uh, our nonprofit organizations and our service companies to give back. The way Kern County always comes together during crisis is what always has impressed me. Uh, watching how communities come together to help uh, support uh, each other uh, when there's a, a home fire or a disaster of some sort. Uh, members of the community come together to, to help champion a family or maybe a cause. It's very heartwarming. Kern County has always been united and, I, and I, it really has impressed me. And uh, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, Kern County definitely helps out residents of Kern County. It's truly unique because of the people, how they care about where they live, and I'm very proud to call Kern County home. The people in Kern County work hard for their money. They're old-fashioned. They were raised on farms, and they were raised working hard in the oil industry. We're hardworking, and that's what's great about Kern County. We are centrally located in the Central Valley, so we have easy access to our mountain areas, our coast. There's definitely something to be said, the Kern County, it's just like hardworking, good people, family oriented. People are moving here for the quality of life. You can buy homes in neighborhoods, or you can buy homes in the outlying areas with a little property and have a horse maybe. A little garden. I think one of the things that makes us unique and different is one, uh, the size of our county, and along with that size, the, the traditional morals and values that this county uh, supports, and, uh, and I'm very much in favor of being a part and living in this uh, county for that reason. I see how business ready Kern County is, and how business friendly it is, how affordable it is. And then also what an incredible hotbed of innovation it is. We have technology, we've got great jobs, we're a great place to expand for business. What a lot of people don't realize is we are the place to live that American dream. The Condado de Kern is different because se crea un lazo entre todas las uh, organizaciones, entre las personas que toman las decisiones, entre las personas de la comunidad, se siente todo más cercano. 
Eh, ha, ha habido un momento que, que todo se ha, se ha hecho como amistad y yo creo que eso hace diferente, el tener a las personas cerca, escuchar y sentir el apoyo. Kern County is the center for food and fiber and energy in California, as well as a transportation hub. There is no other county that possesses the people, the work ethic, the resources and the location that we do. I'm excited about our county's optimism. We're writing a new narrative today. We're asking the big questions and rethinking the way things have always been done. Our goal is to reach out to our students and give them the opportunities. Doesn't mean that they're going to take them, but we have to expose our students to the opportunities, and that's why education and business need to be connected. On almost a daily basis, we're seeing changes all around us. In Wasco, we just added a new solar farm, which is going to power a variety of city buildings, an investment that's going to be worthwhile. There is a lot of change happening in Kern County right now but I believe with change comes opportunity. Kern County has an incredible opportunity to grow over the years, and I believe it is an exciting time for us to learn, educate, and grow together as a community. Universities and community colleges enrollments are exploding. More people are going to college now more than ever, and that means California's economic workforce is going to be strong. But the change that we're looking at right now is nothing but positive. It's, it's about growth. I see growth happening on the western part of the county and I see growth happening on the eastern part of the county. More and more people in the county are realizing what we've got and they're beginning to really see the, the value in, uh, in, in integrating east to west. Our top issue in Kern County is how to create more access for kids to pediatric doctors so we can keep kids well more of the time. And the leadership of Kern County is our great partner in accomplishing that. Just look around and you can see the results. We want to give a very special thank you to all of you who appeared in that video. We know that was quite a scramble to get you up there, so thank you for participating. That was uh, very kind of you. Without further delay, I'm honored to introduce our chairman. Chairman Couch has been representing Kern County residents in the 4th District since 2012. He's worked hard to make sure his constituents' needs are met and he's continually advocating for them. While most of us interact with the chairman in a professional setting, he's the same guy whether he's on the dais or at breakfast downtown. He's one of the most honest and straightforward guys you'll meet, and I'm, I'm not sure if he was voted most likely to be a politician in his senior yearbook, but I am certain that he's most likely to sit down and have a very real conversation with you. With you. Please, Please join, join me in welcoming, welcoming Chairman, chairman David, David Couch. Couch. Hello. Before, Before I get started, started I want to tell you that I was just outside, outside and that it's great. great. It feels great out there. So, so I know that I'm all that stands between you and the, and the great weather. Um, good evening and a welcome to the 21st annual State of the County. I am really happy and very excited to be here. No, <clears throat> really, I'm very happy and excited to be here because if you think back, middle of last year, uh, I wasn't actually so certain that I would be here tonight. <laughs> and some of you, uh, if you're honest, you might uh, agree that uh, even you might have had some doubts. 2018 certainly presented some challenges. Last year there was a little thing called redistricting. We had an election. Cannabis was in the news. It wasn't an easy year, but we made it. We had some wins. And I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about the county as a whole. We saw great success in 2018. Supervisors, department heads, staff, and you here tonight stepped up and you met the challenges head on. Tonight I'd like to do a couple of things. I want to talk about the successes we've had, I want to acknowledge our challenges, and I want to lay out a clear picture of the road ahead. And lastly, I want to talk about the role that each and every one of us in this room can play in that. And I want to do that in the context of tonight's theme, which is it's always now. I want you to keep that in mind while you listen tonight, that it's always now. The past is a memory. It's a thought arising in the present. The future is merely anticipated. It's another thought arising now. 
What we really only have is right now. We have this moment and this one and this one. And we can spend our lives forgetting that, repudiating it, running away from it. But really, all we really have is right now. So now let's talk about our successes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been fighting this cold for a while, and I still have the cough. We followed through on our commitment to diversify, to diversify our economy, while still remaining grounded in what makes Kern County unique. We saw growth at the Tohon Mountain, or excuse me, Tohon Commerce Center, the wonderful investment complex, and at our airport. More companies are recognizing the value in terms of connectivity that Kern County offers with our highways, rail spurs, and airports. When you combine that with a loyal workforce, a cooperative permitting process, and reasonably priced real estate, Kern is getting recognized. In May of last year, Kern County was actually named the wind capital of the world. Not because of the wind that may come out of the Board of Supervisors meetings, <clears throat> all the wind energy projects. We actually lead the nation in several categories. Wind and solar energy is one. We are the number one ag producer in the nation. We're the number two oil producing county in the nation. 72% of California's total production is done right here. And our attractive real estate market I mentioned before makes us the second most affordable county in the state. Outside of the industries that are part of our history, <coughs> excuse me, that ground us in the tradition and give us that small town feel, even though there's about a million of us now, we've also witnessed some amazing developments in aerospace. You may recall a little thing called Spaceship Two, or the VSS Unity. Perhaps you've heard of the Strata Launch. Right here in Kern County, we are proud to have the Mojave Air and Space Port that is bringing together the likes of Virgin Galactic, the Spaceship Company, Scale Composites, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, and a host of other companies, all in a really unassuming location in East Kern that has quietly gone about their business of breaking records, breaking the speed of sound, and really breaking the mold. Additionally, we're proud to be the home of two military installations, Edwards Air Force Base and China Lake Naval Air Weapons Station. They are both reaching outside their gates to improve their communities, and while we'd love to tell you what's going on inside the gates, you know the joke. If I told you, Mick Gleason would have to kill you. <laughs> Let's pause right there for a second while we're on the subject of the military. If you are active military or if you are a veteran, would you please stand now so we could recognize you and thank you for your service to our country. Thank you. As an organization, we also saw great success. We really have a culture change underway at the county. We continue to focus on efficiency and process improvements with our Lean Six Sigma effort called Launch Kern. Through our Launch Kern projects, we've saved the county more than $7 million, and that does not include the money saved through learning to do more with fewer people. We've taken the opportunity not to rehire where possible, and we've watched our service levels closely to ensure that we're not doing this on the backs of the residents who need us the most. Our departments have done great work individually. Unfortunately, there is no way I can recognize all of them tonight, but there were some really impressive results that I want to highlight. Just this morning, you heard it mentioned earlier, the Kern County Homeless Collaborative conducted the annual point in time count. Kern County recognized that we have a need to address, and so we appointed a homeless coordinator this past year. For the first time, we had more than 125 county employees volunteer for the count. There were more than 550 volunteers that signed up to participate in the count. That shattered all records from previous years. For the first time, we had teams in all outlying communities, not just here in Bakersfield. They were in Delano, Rosamond, California City, Taft, Tehachapi, McFarland, Lost Hills, Mojave, Fraser Park, Lamont, Arvin, Boron, Maricopa, and Ridgecrest. All of them had teams connecting with the residents who need our help the most. This is so, go ahead. This is such important work because our ability to fund services, excuse me, services is tied to the point in time count. For those of you that were there this morning and they're here tonight, you've had a long day. Thank you very, very much for being at both places. 
Another item that's been on everyone's mind this year has been pedestrian safety. Our Public Works Department had a huge focus in making our sidewalks and crosswalks more ADA compliant, more accessible, and more safe. They secured nearly $20 million in funding for pedestrian improvements in the last fiscal year alone. They updated nearly 80 intersection, intersections with single lane uncontrolled crosswalks to be ADA compliant, updating the paint, curb ramps, and adding street lights. That work alone was $5 million. We've also updated more than 60 intersections with countdown crosswalk signs that tell pedestrians how long they have left to cross the street. That was every intersection within a half mile of a school. Walkkern.com is a website that hosts all the maps, tours, and updates on those projects. I'd invite you to check that out. This is normally the point in the speech where Bill Thomas stands up and takes over and <laughs> tells us about the trip projects. But Bill couldn't be here tonight because he is at a California Transportation Commission meeting advocating for more funding for Kern County. <clears throat> he knew I was gonna give him a hard time. So really, since he's not here tonight to do that, we're just gonna get home a few minutes earlier. <clears throat> But we all do need to thank him when you see him. Thank him for what he does for our community and that he is still advocating for this community. The past year, public health, uh, our public health department worked diligently to help county residents make healthy eating decisions amongst uh, and other several, several of the programs. They started their certified healthy ratings for restaurants that offered diners healthy food options and met 10 nutritional criteria they also launched their pilot program, which I have a special place in my heart for, called Know Your Numbers. The Know Your Numbers initiative encourages residents to keep track of their health, uh, including cholesterol levels, blood sugar levels, and blood pressure. Kern County Public Health is actively working to keep our residents safe and healthy. And finally, I want to recognize our budget staff. For the past two and a half years, they have been working to follow our deficit mitigation plan. By the end of fiscal year 1920, our deficit will be completely mitigated. <clears throat> Nancy and Elsa could sure whip those people in Washington into shape, but we are not going to let them go. And while budgets and finances might not be everyone's favorite subject, our budget team has been awarded the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for the fourth year now. We understand how valuable those successes are because we know how hard you worked to achieve them. Last year we heard from some of our residents that they didn't feel they were being represented adequately. I'm referring to the MALDEF lawsuit. Representing new and different communities after redistricting requires us to be thoughtful, inclusive, and transparent, and maybe more so than ever before. I know that our employees, who are the lifeblood of our service delivery, do that each and every day and I know that the board is committed to serving each community and each resident to our very best. Our fiscal situation continues to pre present what some people call character building moments. It's still tough, we still have cuts to make. That's what makes our launch current project so important. We're gonna need every employee looking at how they do their jobs and continue to find more efficiency so that we can continue to cut waste instead of jobs and people. We have employees who would love an increase in pay, and quite frankly, they deserve one. And I think I am, can speak safely for the board when I say all of us would love nothing more than to be in a financial position to give every employee a cost of living increase. But we're still one and a half years away from our four-year goal of resolving our deficit, and we have the task of deciding if cutting people is worth being able to provide that increase. So far, we've kept as many people employed as possible. And I don't really mean just employed, I mean working for all of you. Now, there's a lot more road in front of us than there is behind us. We have huge opportunities here in Kern County. To take advantage of those, we have to understand where we are, there are economic realities, legislative impacts, and community developments that will affect our ability to take advantage, and they'll affect every one of you as well. And we're still in California. Some of you are business owners, that are subject to the same economic cycles we are. 
Some of you may be part of a corporation that battles the same legislative battles we do. And still some of you represent communities that are changing or trying to change just to meet the needs of your residents just like we are. Our economic diversity is still a concern. We are heavily tied to oil and ag, and that means we ride that wave just like they do. That doesn't diminish the value of other industries. Quite frankly, it's the exact opposite. We have an abundance of sun and wind. Again, we are the wind energy capital of the world. Are we partnering with those existing businesses to look for the next opportunity that stems from their power generation? I mentioned aerospace earlier. I don't want to revisit that for just a second. We compete with Florida organizations. Excuse me, we compete with Florida for organizations that need launch access. Do you know that we, you know that we, what we have that they don't have? We have clear skies. The number of days we have in East Kern that are clear for launch far exceed what Florida can provide. We could be the launch capital of the world, but we are losing that manufacturing opportunity when companies come here, do their research, and then they leave to build that elsewhere. We need to change that. We've been operating in the distribution space for a few years now, and we've just recently entered the e-commerce space with the Amazon facility. What is the next evolution of that? What should we be building to support those industries? We have to continue to break the mold, and we have to capture all the opportunities that are out there and available to us. We also have to pay attention to the legislative climate. The decisions made at the state level have a direct impact on us and you. They can affect our funding streams that could mean millions of dollars that we use to provide services. We saw this last year in in-home support services, and we witnessed a trend over the last few years where the state is settling local governments with more and more of the costs, unfunded mandates. The new governor recently rolled out his budget, and counties are already expressing concern over some of the items in that budget. Fortunately for us, the California State Association of Counties is weighing in on those concerns. Also taking place this year will be bail reform. That was approved in 2018. This could potentially be a drain on our public defender and our district attorney's offices. In addition, and this is not a slight to the city of Bakersfield, when they add 100 officers to the street, that is going to put a stress on our whole law enforcement system. And we're going to have to find a way to keep up. It means we have to be more vigilant than we've ever been in our partnership with our state elected officials, probably more than we've ever been. We will have to actively inform them. I like that term, actively inform. Remember, remember that when you're, when you're lobbying your, your uh, legislator, tell them you're just actively informing him. <clears throat> we have to actively inform them on the needs of our county, including the needs of our businesses that play such a huge role in our financial position. In addition to the economic and legislative realities, there are community-based changes that are far more pronounced than ever before. We're seeing revitalization efforts in lots of communities. Cities are exploring alternative sources of income in order to stop the negative trend of losses, and it's pushing them into areas that they've never really been in before. It's really exciting, actually, to be a part of the conversations with communities as they actively pursue options to diversify their own economic outlook. McFarland is an example. They're working to expand and add new developments that will hopefully give them the ability to realize greater revenue in the future. Shafter, little Shafter, continues to do some great, great developments. We could stop there. We could say, eh, that's a lot of good stuff, and it's a tough road ahead, and we'll chip away at it. That's not quite enough. We have the chance to exceed expectations and capture all the opportunity before us. Let me talk about how the county can lead that charge. The foundation of all of this is that the county has to be in a solid fiscal position. We'll continue our four-year budget mitigation strategy, and we're sticking to it. We will see better days ahead. And it doesn't mean that all the challenges are going to disappear. Not at all. We're going to see fluctuations in property tax and sales tax. We're still going to have increasing demands placed on our people, our systems, and our services. That's why it's critical that we stay the course. I feel like we're, we got the ball deep in our own territory, and now we're in the red zone, to use a Super, super Bowl metaphor. We just got to stick with it. We'll continue to focus on efficiency. We have to. I think we owe you that. And good government requires it. There's no excuse for waste, and there's no excuse for unnecessary redundancy. We'll make sure every new employee receives 
training on our launch current program and will pursue the departments and the employees who still need to participate. Think about something. If we save more than $7 million in the first two years with only 700 employees taking part, imagine if what we'll find if 7,000 employees were taking part and looking for efficiencies in everything they do. Right now is the time to shatter the perception that government spending is always wasteful. Why can't Kern County be the gold standard in fiscal responsibility? I think we owe you that too. We're committed to business, our business and, economic uh, business and economic development. We'll continue to support organizations like KEDC and Cal State University Bakersfield Small Business Development Corporation who are out there every day helping bring businesses to Kern County and helping those who want to start a small business find success. We have a dedicated team who's ready to use our economic incentive program to attract businesses that want to bring high paying jobs to Kern County. We still, excuse me, unlike any other county in the state, we have an incentive program that allows organizations to receive a rebate on their property taxes based on how many high paying jobs they create and how long those jobs remain. There's no one else in the state doing that. We've recently added three economic diversity coordinators to the East Kern area. These three employees are tasked with pursuing opportunities to bring new businesses, real estate development, and infrastructure improvements to the communities of East Kern. We have such a talent pool in East Kern, and we have to do better at bringing jobs and the ancillary businesses that complement our bases and our spaceport. We know our residents need jobs, and a healthy employed workforce translates to a healthy and vibrant economy. We maintain our commitment to supporting the com companies that will support our residents. Right now, we're starting partnerships with communities, citizen groups, and legislators that are going to provide us with future opportunities. But we have to build those partnerships now. Remember, all we have is right now. We have to be taking part in the conversation now. We'll continue to partner with cities and communities as they look to develop their economic opportunities even within their own boundaries. Our people in planning will continue to bring developers to the table and expand the opportunities we have. We'll continue to partner with our industrial centers. Whether it's our health statistics, our homelessness rate, our economic development, or pet fostering and adoption, we have the knowledge and expertise to change the landscape of our community. These challenges can't be met and the opportunities can't be seized if we don't have partnership. This is where you come in. As a county, we assume a great deal of responsibility for all the issues I just talked about. They're in our wheelhouse. We're good at it, but we can't succeed alone. Here tonight, we have representation from renewable energy, healthcare and hospitals, agriculture, mining, energy providers, trash haulers, oil, construction, K through 12 education, higher education, veterans, nonprofits, local sports affiliates, emergency services, aerospace, economic development, and almost all of our cities. This room is filled with the most connected and influential people in Kern County. If we can't solve some of our problems, we have a much bigger problem on our hands. We need you. We need your time. We need your brains. We need your expertise. And we need you right now. So ask yourself, what's your role in the solution to homelessness? to economic growth, to stray animals, whatever it is. I'll tell you what I think it is. It's for you to partner with us as we take the right now and turn it into opportunity and success. We need you to be an ambassador for Kern County. This blows me away. There was a survey recently that showed the rest of the country thought more highly of Kern County than the people that actually live here. <clears throat> we just need you to go out and brag about yourselves a little bit. What problems are persisting because you or us are willing to look the other way? What are we looking the other way? What problems are we looking the other way on and we don't even know we're looking the other way? And what partnerships are we missing right now? What can we learn from how the private sector tackles a problem that we can put into practice here in local government? What are you doing in your city that we're not doing at the county? What resources do we have that we could better utilize, that we could create better partnerships with trying to uh, change the faith, with people that are trying to change the face of their communities? How can nonprofits work differently than they have in the past? 
Every single one of us in this room, if, if every single one of us in the room, this room focused on how to capture the opportunity and overcome the challenges that we face, what would that look like? Because the bottom line is that right now, we got to dig down. We got to make that happen. Right now, we have to ready ourselves for the next opportunity. Right now, we have to stop telling ourselves that we've always done it that way, that we're different, and somehow that's a negative. I want to share a few quick examples of how right now looks in the lives of the people sitting here tonight. My district director, director Sal Moretti, used to work for the city of Albuquerque, he led all sorts of projects in public works. He worked for the city of Bakersfield for 15 years, superintendent in the solid waste department. He was in the United States Air Force. He's done all that. He retired from the city and we hired him. And within two weeks, he was rushed to the hospital for open heart surgery. He went home from work on a Friday, and Monday he was having open heart surgery. No warning, no time to prepare, and no guarantees that tomorrow was around the corner. I think he were in a medically induced coma for days. <clears throat> Sal lives differently these days. He doesn't sweat the small stuff, and he lives for the right now. For Sal, it's always now. Jeff Flores, Chief of, uh, Chief of Staff for Supervisor Mac Mike Maggard, is also no stranger to unexpected circumstances and tragedy. Jeff's young niece one day recently discovered paralysis in her foot. Within a few days, that paralysis spread and she passed away before she ever had the opportunity to experience a full life. That tragedy has certainly changed Jeff and his perspective. I think if you were to ask Jeff, he's more aware of the moment and he lets fewer of them pass without saying and doing the things he needs to. For Jeff, it's always now. Lastly, years ago, before my mom and dad passed away, my dad called me one day to talk about something that we had before us when I was on the city council. It was an emotional issue. We weren't going to make people happy no matter what we did. And he told me this, just do what you think is right and risk the consequences. Right now, we need to take the hard things and we need to do what's right and risk the consequences, regardless of the consequences to ourselves. And we need to remember, it's always now. Thank you very much for being here. God bless you. God bless you. It's always now. 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 Es por siempre ahora. Big thank you to the chairman. Thank you so much to all the folks who appeared in the video as well. Quickly, before you rush off, if you valeted your car, be sure that you have your information ready that you gave them when you gave them your keys. Otherwise, the rest of us are going home with a whole lot of great cars. Um, the centerpieces in your table are your gift from us to you. Here's how you get them. It is the person with the birthday closest to today. However, if there is a tie, you have to rock, paper, scissors to break it. Hey, thank you all so much for being a part of the 21st Annual State of the County Dinner, and we will see you all next year.